Let's talk to you today about the Orton Vent Master. This is a patented product that we developed at Orton in the 1980s and they revised it in the 2000s. This is the size of the box that you will receive and I have before me the contents of what you'll find within that box. So what you'll find within the box are a number of pamphlets with information on it. We provide you with a cones and firing booklet in that you will find some useful information about our parametric cones. We have for you a kiln safety manual, very good information for you and in how to fire a kiln safely and effectively. And best of all, the manual that you will find for the installation and care of this vent master. Reading through this manual, you'll find that we have two different versions of this vent master available and the difference between those models is one of them is a 110 volt version for use in the US and those countries that operate with that type of power. And the other is a 208 to 240 volt version, which is a universal vent for overseas in countries that use that type of power. The motors are both 73 cubic feet per minute blowers and they contain on them a cord. In the 240 volt version, you get a cord that is with no plug on the end so that you can install a appropriate plug for your particular country. In the 110 volt version, we provide you a standard plug that is used in the US and on that cord, there is a on off switch available for you. Getting deeper into what's available in this box is the collection cup, which is made from a cast aluminum. It has holes around the perimeter of it to allow air in. We give you a high temperature gasket that sets on top of the collection cup. Now there are three different recommended methods that you can use to attach this cup which goes up underneath your kiln to be able to extract the, the fumes. And I'm going to go through those different types of installations for you. So for the assembly of the collection cup, you're gonna find in the manual on page seven that we go through these different types. But I'll show you demonstration here. The first method is the most universal method, which we'll be utilizing the spring. To do this, you will need the coupling and the extension with only a short length of thread on it. That gets placed onto the foot pedestal. You attach the coupling and you screw on the extension rod. Once that is assembled, you take the spring that we provide you and lay that over top of the whole assembly there. And that's what allows you to put the collection cup by compressing the spring down, setting the cup on top. It is now spring loaded so that when you put this up underneath your kiln, it will rise to the level of the underside of your kiln and make a nice connection. If you decided that you did not want to do a spring loaded method, you could opt to use the more rigid installation, that's if the kiln is not going to be moved and you're going to pretty much leave it in place, then this method works for you. You will not need in this assembly the rod that has the short length of thread on it. Instead, you will use the full length threaded rod and you will put the thumb screw on in this ar arrangement so that this then goes onto the pedestal and then you adjust the height of the total assembly by how far you thread this rod up into the bottom side of the collection cup. So you have adjustment and then once you lock that in, the thumb screw is tightened up so that it comes tight to the bottom side of the collection cup. So that is the rigid method of, of this installation. The third way you could utilize this cup on your kiln is to not use the pedestal at all 
and that would come into play on a kiln that has a steel plate for the bottom or the sides of the kiln are flat surfaces. You could utilize the holes that we have put into the rim of the collection cup and you place the gasket in line with that and then you can use sheet metal screws to attach it to the bottom of the kiln or to the side of the kiln. So now that we have this connected to the blower, you're going to also use this cap that we provide to you to cover up the second port. This is for when you don't use it on two kilns or you're not venting twice. The, the other end of this goes on to the two inch opening of your collection cup. Tighten it down and you're ready to go to install it on the kiln. So for those of you who are going to be venting two kilns, you will need a second collection cup and hose, which is available as a hose expansion kit. Let's talk going forward about how you then determine the number of holes that you're going to drill into your kiln to size it for the size of kiln that you have to make this vent work efficiently. So now we have assembled all the parts and we're ready to figure out how to put holes in our kiln to exhaust and bring in the fumes and the fresh air. This information for the site is, is available on our manual on page five. So we provide to you a quarter inch diameter drill bit in the, in the kit. Now this drill bit can actually be drilled through the brick of your kiln very easily, even with your fingers. So this is an example of some of the fire brick that is used in kilns. And it is very friable and easy to work with. So I could actually work this in using my fingers, but attach this to a drill, find the location of where you're gonna put your holes and use that to drill. So for a four cubic foot kiln or smaller, you will just need one hole. And for every four cubic feet, an additional kiln space volume, you would add another hole. A maximum of four holes is the most you could use for a kiln as large as 20 cubic feet. That is the limitation for our vent. Once you have your kiln vent installed on your kiln, you'll want to test the effectiveness of how it's been installed. And this is described to you on page nine of our manual. We call this the testing with a match. And the way that works is you can take a lit flame from a match and put it over top of the hole on the top of the kiln that you made for the intake. And the flame should be drawn very gently down into the kiln when, once the motor is turned on to the vent. You can use a number of different types of duct work to connect the four inch opening of your hose to exhaust to the outside. Before me, I have a couple of examples of that. We recommend that you get the heavy duty version of the flexible aluminum duct work, not the foil type. You'll need a four inch hose clamp and that will connect to the four inch opening. This can be expanded out to four or eight foot in length, can be found at most hardware stores. The other thing you can do is you can use Schedule 40 PVC pipes. So this is a short length of that. Now, in order to fit that to the opening on the four inch, you will need to get one of these rubber boots that fits over the end, and that will then enclose the end and the opening. So our vents are certified by ETL, which is a cert independent lab that has come and tested our product and verified that it is electrically sound and safe to be used. We are allowed to put their label on our vents to indicate that it's passed this inspection, and you can find that on the motor itself. You can also find on this label the information about what type of motor it is, whether it's 110 volt or 240 volt, and it gives you the UL standard that we are adhering to in order to get this certification, which is UL standard 507. So thank you for your purchase of Event Master. We highly recommend that you take advantage of all the literature that we provided for you and read it and understand what's in there. If you want to find more resources on our product, Event Master, and our other products, visit us at ortonceramic.com.